It's a jungle out there, and to make yourself heard, you just need to make more noise than all the other animals. Or you can follow the ancient arid path of the wise sages and a bloke I once met in a pub in Guildford. And just listen. The mystery around listening is not that only a few people know how to do it, it's more that only a few people actually bother. Perhaps we would all listen more if only we knew how much it could help us. Interested? Here's how to do it and what happens afterwards. You need to look out for three ingredients in what the other person is saying and doing how they seem to be feeling, what the feeling is about, and then why they seem to be having that feeling about that thing. It does take a bit of getting used to, so here are three examples of how it plays out in action. You're trying to get buy-in for an idea and the other person starts to frown as you explain. You can either repeat yourself or you can say, you look skeptical about my idea. I guess that's because you think it won't work. You've given someone a piece of negative feedback and they roll their eyes. Instead of challenging them, you say, you seem irritated that I've given you this feedback. I imagine that's because you think it's nonsense. You sense an argument breaking out between two colleagues in a meeting and you want it to stop. But instead of telling them to stop, you say, Jane, you seem really annoyed that John is suggesting X, Y, Z. And John, you're obviously frustrated that Jane is questioning your plan. By pointing out what you see and hear, maybe a few times, you allow other people to realise that you really are paying them attention. This will help them to settle the turmoil in their heads, and when they are more settled, will likely prompt them to pay attention to what you have to say. So, if corporate life is indeed a jungle, then the way to get heard, surely, is to quieten the general racket so that your voice is noticed in the calm that you have created by listening.